Andre, the Beast, Creighton Show, with my co-host, Yolanda Smith. What's up, what's up, what's Man, up, Man, it's what's been up? a long day. I love it. It's been a great day. We've been live all day. Live! Killing it. Killing the game. We have had so much diversity today, it'll make your mind boggle. We have you power, know. strength, and now we got soul. Absolutely. <laughs> I am excited today that we have two really awesome gentlemen joining us from the music industry. You know, sometimes you can mix it up a little bit, but one of the things that we are about is about highlighting brothers trying to do things. And music is a universal language that we can all align to. So with that, I want to introduce our two guests today. We've got coming all the way from the Veal, and I'm Louis. talking about Louis. Kentucky. Veal, Kentucky. <laughs> we got Scoot. He calls himself G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and right here with me next to me is my main man, Damon Carl. And that's Carl with the KKK. Indiana's own. Right. Indiana oh, with the KKK. What? KKK. What's happening, fellas? What's happening, guys? How you doing today? All <laughs> right. All right. Scoot, we're going to start with you since we got you on the on the camera. I want to give an opportunity to tell our viewers a little bit about you and if you could just introduce yourself and tell them what your genre of music is and uh, how you kill in the game. Dang, I like the way I you said that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's good? Well, what's up, boy school. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I live in Louisville, Kentucky right now. Um, I've been doing music uh, for a long time, actually. I used to get in trouble all the time in school for even freestyling all the time, so that's what I do. And... Um, like I say, man, uh, the things that I've been doing is really just staying real and just being honest to myself because I know that, uh, you know, like you say, music is a, um, it's the language of life right now. You know what I'm saying? So it's a universal language. So that's your boy. Glad to have you on the show. Have you on the show. Damon, what's up? How you doing this morning? Um, or this, this evening? Yeah, look, this look. is e We've been here look, since this we've morning. We've been here since, yeah, since noon. <laughs> we, we like to think this podcast is timeless. So Yeah, this is a timeless podcast right here. Absolutely. So what's going on with you these days? Uh, you know, I'm a singer-songwriter, born and raised here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And um, I've been doing music since I was 16. And, you know, I've, I've gotten my inspiration from church and wanting to learn how to play guitar and, you know, moved audiences with my, you know, song. So. Okay, wait a minute. I'm great cut in because I'm getting a baby face vibe over here from him. You know, I, you know, I give baby. good love. <laughs> Y'all know we, we we coming to you from Indianapolis, Indiana, Naptown in the house. But this is interesting because I went to North Central High School and, you know, I went to school with Face. Mm -hmm. So, but we didn't call him Baby Face back then, right? Yeah. But he used to sit in the cafeteria and we used to think he was nerdy, you know. He'd sit in the cafeteria and be strumming his guitar and all the little girls be coming up, ah, kitty, kitty. And we were like, this dude, but I'm kind of getting the little baby face vibe yeah, over yeah. here. You got your guitar with you today, so there's no telling what might be in store. Let's get right down to the point. Subscribe, like, share, share comment, and comment, and rate. And rate. And rate. Yes, can you rate us? We want to be rated. I've never... Only five stars, please. X. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought... Okay, darn. Let's, let's start off with, with, with Scooty. You know, you done said the wrong name. I, I know him as Scooty. Y'all know him as Scoot. I call him Scooty because we go back far back. So tell me about your journey. I mean, you was in the military. You did. You know, tell your story better than I can. That's yeah. Um. Well, I was born and raised in Chicago, moved back and forth from the East Coast, West Coast, and, um, you know, San Diego and back to Chicago as a kid. And uh, I started, you know, I was getting in trouble for rapping, freestyling and stuff like that. And then um, years later, I moved to Chicago with my, with my auntie and them. And from there, I went to high school, 
play football, you know, wasn't really too heavy in the streets then, but I got in a lot of stuff, a lot of problems in the streets and I had to, you know, do some things that I didn't want, I ain't like doing because of my community, you know, the environment. However, um, from there, I went off to the military and, you know, retired in 2015. And uh, I'm here now. I'm doing I'm actually fully I'm a full time artist, entrepreneur, um, you know, just, just living my life the best way I can right now. Did you have any role models and stuff growing up? Because you said you got into some trouble uh, growing up. And we all we all did. But who was your role models and were there people around there that you can gravitate to before you decided to go into the military? And then we'd go on from there. As far as males, I didn't have any of them. Um, mm-hmm. Like, the only thing I used to do when I, as a kid was I would play Tupac CDs. Like, I'll play his old CDs. I'll play his post you know, the, the album that was released after his death. Mm-hmm. And yep. that's when I literally start gravitating towards, like, you know, rhyming, <laughs> writing, like, trying to write songs and mm-hmm. writing verses and stuff like that. And, you know, it really didn't, really didn't happen until I went to Iraq in 2006 where I was sitting in a trailer and um, I used to freestyle and this guy, his name was Stab Sergeant Thomas. I was like a, a specialist and he pulled me in his trailer and he was like, yo, I hear you be rapping. I'm like, yeah, I freestyle, whatever. So we go to his trailer and, you know, who was guarding a high value target at the time. Um, it was Saddam Hussein, obviously. Well, yeah, I don't know if it was Saddam, but it was, we guarded Saddam Hussein. But um, I'll go to his trailer and he'll put a beat on. I just start rapping. He gave me this little speakerphone on the computer. We just start rapping. And then he was like, yo, you ever came up with a hook? I was like, no. Nah. So he started teaching me how to write hooks and count bridges and, and mm-hmm. just, you know, just how to create a whole entire song to make it sound fuller and not repetitive. Right. Yes. You know, so. Put some meat in it. So I, right. You put meat into it and into where you could tell a story within the story so people will understand. And, you know, it's just it's another way of being articulate. So, like, for me, music was like the only thing I actually ever had in my life, you know. I didn't have any any male role models. All I had was Tupac, Jay Z, Fifty, Eminem, Nas, um, Ludacris, Common. You know those people were my pops. So, go ahead, Yolanda. No, I was just thinking because I'm going back kind of to this military experience, and it sounds like to me that was for you that ended up being a positive thing. It, it gave me direction, you know. Yeah. It gave me because you know, um, like my thing was in Chicago. See, I grew up on the South Side, so like. I lived, I lived in a neighborhood with black stones, and then I had to go into the GD na- part of the neighborhood, just get on a, on a bus to go to high school. My high school was like on the other side of town, where you're dealing with people you don't even know, and you you know, east side of Chicago is is where the murderers re- really be at, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like, um, you know, dealing with that, you know, because I, I play football just to stay stay out of trouble and to stay out the streets. Right, right. But the the problem is when you're going from one neighborhood to the next neighborhood, and this is this is like early two thousands, you know. So back then, a lot of games <clears> you and stuff. Really, back then, you had to call people if you knew somebody. Like, yo, I'm coming through the hood. Let them people know I'm coming through. Yeah. If you don't know nobody, man, you risking it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, I had to do that every day, and in the, in the beginning, I didn't know anybody. But what happened was I ended up getting my ass whooped and jumped on enough to where. You know, I got tired of getting my ass whooped. I started fighting back. Then they realized, okay, dude, gonna fight back. Let's leave him alone. He's gonna keep coming here. You know, you know, and back in you know back in that time frame, you didn't have a choice of what high school you went to. Gotcha. Because they was trying to they was trying to diversify things and keep all the kids in a certain area. The kids and and when doing you got mm-hmm. when you got kids that grew up with gang, you know, in gangster mentalities. When you got when they worship, you know, certain people. And even though those people probably weren't really gangs, they were really just trying to help the community. But, you know, of course, when they take out uh, black leaders out of our communities and they turn them and tell, say that they was negative when they wasn't. Right. You know, you cut the head off. Then you got a whole bunch of cowboys claiming they they the boss and everything. So, you know, because I didn't have that 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 input. And even though my father was around like once a month, that didn't help me either because he thought I was just a, a, a weird kid because mm-hmm. I like the things I like. You have brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were they how, how were they? Insp- you know, in, how did they impact your life? Did they were they positive with you? Did you were you able to share things with them? Did they understand where you came from? Um. Well, when I played football, my football team did. I mean, like most of the people, my football team did. Um, because they was all teenagers going through the same thing I was going through. There's a little different. Um, I dealt with uh, a lot of um growing up, you know, a lot of instability because my mom. We was part of DC. We we got took from my mom when I was like twelve. So, 
and I was 12, I was hustling, selling crack in, in San Diego. You know what I'm saying? So I was, I was literally becoming a man then. And then when I got to Chicago, I knew nobody. So it's like, I, and I'm the oldest out of five kids. Yeah. So now, you, felt- you know, so it's difficult when you transition it from, you know, one way of life. And then it's different because it's like in the West coast, people are different. You know, who is who, what is what in right. Chicago, you, you know, know it's, it's a little different. Yeah. And we don't know anybody. You, you know, you become more of a bigger target because it's, it's easily, you easily become a target out there. Yeah. When, no, did you, that's... when did you decide to, to go to the military? What was that turning point? Was it because of all the stuff that you was going through that that became like the, the easy, the, the better alternative for you? Well, I didn't, well, what happened was I, I did a year in college. I played, I played college football for a year and then um, I went home to my aunt crib with my siblings and I didn't like the I didn't I didn't like the environment. I didn't like sitting at home. I couldn't even get a job at Wendy's. They was like I was overqualified. <laughs> so I was trying to like that's, that sounds familiar. <laughs> yo, I'm dead serious. They said I only did a year in college. I went, you know, I went to school for business. They said I was overqualified to work as a cashier at Wendy's. Jeez. So so that summer of 2005, I'm literally like sitting around the house trying to get out. And I just say, you know what, man? I need to do something. I need to get my ass out this out this house. I need to, you know, do something to that, you know, and get some type of structure because I'm I'm around women, toxic women at that. Oh. You know, my mom, my mom was a crackhead, so it's like I'm around her. My auntie, she ain't no better. I mean, even though she ain't do crack, she was the religious one. But um, I just said, fuck it, man. If I gotta go to war, kill some people, or or you know, my, whatever I gotta do, I I rather do that than be here. Right. And that's how you so, got over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I'd rather go ahead and go overseas if I got to put myself in, and just to make money. You know what I'm saying? Like the opportunities of earning money for me wasn't, I didn't see those opportunities where I see it now later on in life because now I have money. Yeah. And I could create and network and do all that stuff versus, you know, then when I didn't have any skill sets at all. Well, and I think at the end of the day, when you think about it, you know, and and kudos to you because you could have chose a different way and you know you could have chose a different way, which could have had a different outcome. But, you know, people sometimes want to be anti-military, but, you know, my brother went, I have a brother that went, and I'm telling you, the structure, you said it, the structure, sometimes just having that structure allows you to grow up and mature, you know, to to some degree and really be able to put you into a, a different frame of mind. But you know, the, the funny part about that is, is it's funny how generations to generations happen. And it seems like at times that seems to be the only alternative that high school offers young men. I'm not even gonna say black or white. We're not gonna go down that road. But usually, yeah. and it's still that stigma to the day. If you're not carrying a football or dribbling a basketball, they don't want to have nothing to do with you instead of trying to provide some type of sustenance for young men. We're not going to, you know, just young men in general, because even when I went to school, we talked about this. You know, I was lucky I got a scholarship, but I had to put so much into sports that I really wasn't trying to be an athlete. I really wanted to have something I can gravitate do to. Otherwise. And, yeah, otherwise. And it was like, right. go to the military. Well, no disrespect. I w- I knew I was not cut out to be in the military. So if you don't have that, that cut out ability to be in the military, what do you have? Well, you just got to figure it out. Because in my household, you were told you're going to college, you better go get a job, or you going to the military. You had three mm-hmm. options, yeah. point blank, point blank. Well, let's that's, that's go right to name. Yeah, yeah. Real so, quick. Hold on, Scooty. We'll be right back. Now, Scooty, hold on a minute. Now, we'll be right back. Subscribe, rate, like, share. And comment. You got a paycheck <laughs> coming. <laughs> I think I really missed my cue, but I picked up on something. I was like, which one did he not say? You're listening to the Andre DeBees Creighton Show, and we are live in living color. We have got Scoot with us. He is the rapper of it, the team, and now we're going to talk a little bit to Damon, bringing us zone. some soul sounds from the nap town. What's up? What's going on? Thank you for having me here. Yeah, we'd like to hear a little bit about your journey. Well, um, I got my first start when I was in church, and I was 16 years old when I first picked up the car- guitar, and I wanted to learn how to play it. So, you know, you can imagine, you know, a kid sitting in the front row of the church and <laughs> looking at the guitarist play, you know, licks on the guitar, and I was like, man, 
I really want to be that. Like, I want to be like that. So, you know, I would go after church asking him and like, hey, can you teach me how to play these licks? And, you know, that's all she wrote. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you knew how to ask for what you want. Oh, yeah. So did so, you, did you, tell me a little bit more about you and your, and your, what, what else made you want to decide to get into music? Well, you know, in the beginning, before I um, wanted to, I before I had this huge fascination of wanting to play guitar, I also sung as well. So, you know, sometimes they, the church would make me get up and sing, you know, leads of songs. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> on, I didn't baby. want to. I would be really, really nervous. <laughs> Come and on, baby. We right, want to right. hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. You know how our churches are doing. It's, yeah. Yeah, and especially epistolic, you know, growing up epistolic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Okay, they were like, there you go. Get up, get up there, baby. You know, we, we, we got you. We got you covered. And, uh, yeah, being able to sing and, you know, move those, move move people through my music, I was like, I want to do this forever. And, you know. Yeah. So, so where are you today? I mean, you think about where it's taking you. So give us a little bit. Okay, so you picked up the guitar at 16 and then what? Well, when I first started picking up the guitar I, at 16, I, I began to go to every single open mic you name it every mm -hmm. single open mic because i saw you know going to open mics as an opportunity to you know reach more and more people and you know um it started you know just me and my guitar and a loop pedal as well too you know mm -hmm. just trying just you know gave it a little variety um variety of it and you know I just, you know, really created a name for myself. So what would, you call, what would you call your genre? What's your genre? I would call my genre, you know, um, R&B okay. and soul. With okay. A mix, with a mix of pop. Okay. You be yeah. trying to get the girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> is this, this your video? This is my video okay. called In Your Kiss. In Your Kiss. Seek your it's got a nice little yeah i gotta check out my bowling too All i'm right. really good at that okay you you bowling too huh all right It is what it is. That's nice. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So, I mean, are, are you doing your thing on your own? You got some people behind you? You signed to a label? I mean, how does all that work? Yes, you currently know? I'm signed to management, um, and, and I am in the label um, called MeCap Music. MeCap Music. MeCap Entertainment. And, um, you know, that's, that's the boss man is Sid Uncle James Johnson. Uncle Jim yeah. Johnson. So is he Uncle local? Uncle Jim's. Jim's the Z. Oh, Jim's. <laughs> Jim's. Z. Jim's. Okay, not no Jim now. Jim's. Like G-E-M-S diseases and things. Okay. Like slow jams. Slow jams. <laughs> oh, slow jams. Like slow j Okay. Now, he has other artists jams. as well up yeah. under his platform, Absolutely. too. Okay. Absolutely. So do you collaborate with a lot of those on music? Or you, you guys are just basically individuals? Do you guys ever come together and collaborate? I mean, yes. We have a few songs that we collaborated on and you know what they what we do is you know we we are able to it's, it's like a big family you know it's mm -hmm. um it's it's a label that you know helps each other out you right. know we're, we're not separate we're not each other's you know own individual artists i mean at the end of the day we are but we help each other you know try to elevate now okay. you just you just don't put your you just don't do open mics nah you know because steve jefferson yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. I, I'm not going. I'm not going to stun off mic. He said I used to. You got to get the operative word. Used to. <laughs> well, I asked Steve when he showed up at at uh, Steve's going away party. Uh, Steve said, "Andre, you got to meet this guy." I said, "Well, who who is he?" And he says, "You know, he came to do some some uh, some work at his house." He said, "Next thing you know, all his music was downloaded on it." <laughs> Tell me about that real quick. <laughs> well, you know, I saw it as an opportunity, and you know, it was it was kind of a funny thing as well. You know, I like to play jokes on Brother Steve Jefferson, and um, 
And so what I did was I, uh, you know, grabbed this phone. I was like, huh, his Spotify list is open. So I, I was like, why not? Just go ahead and add, you know, Damon Carl, you know, add all my songs that's here right now. Which you guys can do. It's available on Spotify, Apple Music, and Tidal, and even YouTube. So it's Damon Carl. All right. And, you know, I added all my music on there. And, you know, he was riding down the street. And he's, you know, um, he goes, huh, I've never heard this song. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks at it and he and I, I tell you I, I kid you not he was just so happy to you know know that I was doing my music and he never until that moment he never knew that I did music because I never really you know yeah, did it around him so you know and then when I heard you I said well I see it I see a young man with a guitar you know I'm sitting at my table and stuff and I'm, I'm watching everything unfold and he gets up on the on the uh, Stand and he starts playing. I said, "Oh, well, I'm not going nowhere." Just <laughs> like, go check this out. Well, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So let me ask Scooty a question as well. Well, really, it's two different type. Music is universal, but we're dealing with two type of music: mm -hmm. R and B, and we're dealing with the culture of 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 rap. What's the difference from what you're doing, and then we'll switch it over to you. Explain that to the you know to the viewers. Hey, I come at you with the questions, dog. <laughs> okay, if something happened to the Yeah, we sound. got an audio. We got a yeah. little audio issue there. I'm not sure what Make happened. Sure. Hold on a minute, Scooty. Like sounds real garbled. I don't. It's like a there. There's a connection issue or something. Try it again. It's still yeah, kind it's, of uh, yeah. It's really garbled. Hmm. Maybe it's his headphones. Uh, can you uh, disconnect and, and call back in real quick? Yeah. Sometimes that'll fix it. So let's go to Damon with that same question while Scooty logs back in. Mm -hmm. What's the difference really between the um, um, the R&B versus the, the rap? So now you're into both. Is there really that much of a difference or what? I mean, as far as the difference, um, I, I, I really, you know, rap is not my genre, so I mm -hmm. really can't tell you what, you know, the difference from R&B is because it's totally two totally different genres, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I believe, you know, everyone has the same objective mm -hmm. whenever they're writing music. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to, you know, connect with the audience. They want to be able to make the audience feel what they're feeling, you know, what, you know, comes from the heart reaches the heart. So that's what what I think whenever I'm writing my music. So, um, you know, I, I think it's the same objective, you know, with what people write. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah. Is Scoop back with us? Well, I mean, I think we know they're, they're separate, right? Mm -hmm. They're definitely, one is really more r rhythmic rhyme sort of. What touches you more about the R&B side? What touches me more is being able to, you know, have somebody listen to my song like 50 times and then <laughs> come up to me and started singing my chorus and I, mean, I, th I think that really touches me because you know it's a it's a it, it's what I try to um, you know practice and what I try to rehearse mm -hmm. um, whenever I'm writing my music okay so is this word gonna stick in their head or is this type of chorus gonna stick in their head so that's what I try to so you really thinking through it oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah seriously Ooh. thinking through it I think we got scoop back you back with us Yes, ma'am. There you go. Yeah, that sounds much okay. better. Okay, so now re-answer that question for me that I gave you. He can well, say uh, the, the huge difference is, you know, is that uh, R and B, you know, is 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 for me. It's just just my opinion is that um, I know I don't I can't sing. You know, I know I'm not. A singer. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> yeah. one sings and one. So it's like, yeah. it's like. I think I think R and B hits the soul differently than, than rap does. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when 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 you hear somebody that 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 does melody and that and then they have to, you know, it's like it's a it's a talent thing as well too. So like the difference I can say is is that it hits differently because there's a lot of melody and a lot of um talent and emotion within within the song. And then with, with rap. You can have someone that don't feel anything that may just sound good because they use an auto tune. Okay. Oh, okay. You know, so in rap, you can manipulate the songs just like in R and B. You can have Willie Vanilli, but at the same token, someone has to put their energy out to make it sound believable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a you good point. So like, like R and B, man, you got to man to make me really like those stuff, man. You got to, I got to be able to to relate. Not just that, but 
my girl gotta like you too. <laughs> <laughs> David, what you think about what he just hey, said? I, you know? Hey, I agree hundred percent. I agree hundred <laughs> percent. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 come on now. We know we all know, you know, you got you, you know, if you if you look at Drake and then you look at um uh, who else, who's an R and B singer, a real R and B singer, you look at um and who's that? Trey Songs. Right. I would rather hear a Trey Songs love song versus a Drake love song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a Drake love song, he's not he's not talking about love. He's talking about Hit his it. feelings, fireworks. <laughs> versus, the, uh, you know, both perspective like Trey Songs. He'll talk about two perspectives from a man and a woman perspective. But then Drake, right. he comes from a melodic rap slash I'm in my feelings type song, and it's like, mm. okay, dog, we get it. You're emotional. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I, I just that's just my thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I rather hit. I rather hit a real singer singing. So yeah. So school. How hard is it for you as a rapper entertainer to really keep going the way you're going in the music industry? I mean, let's get real. Everybody now is rapping. I mean, you know, but there has to be a margin of perfection and to stay in this game and to keep your name out there. What are you doing to keep your name out there and to you you had to rechange because you said when you came back from the military, you had to learn technology. Yeah. Take, take me down that road. Yeah, so, so when it comes to music, what I do is um st uh you know stand staying updated with what's going on. Mm -hmm. And also just continue being me, you know, because I don't want to sound like everybody else sounded. Because I mean, right now in hip hop, everybody sounded like, mm -hmm. you know, like I mean, you know, I just listened to the Kanye West album, and I actually was inspired by it because it sounded different. Mm. You so know, how do you I was break? Really yeah. inspired by it. So how do you break so, through this game? And, and and really, I think what he's saying is, you know, when you think about it, you got to have a competitive advantage or something, some unique value proposition, or is it just making that right connection to get, get. I'm about to, I'm about to tell you exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his eyeballs. It, 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 okay, wait a minute. It just got real on the Andre yeah. Bruce Creighton show so, live. So it took me, it took me over a decade just to get where I'm at right now with having a, a major company representing me and marketing my music. Yes. Um, before I had a deal with Sony and I did a deal, you know, with them and a, a, another, a, a smaller label with the Sony situation. And right now we dealing with some legal issues because someone decided to take my song down. <laughs> One of my songs down. Why did they take it down? We're in, the of a, we're in the middle of a lawsuit, you know, they took so your that song. song right what does sexy. that mean that when you sexy. say that one you playing right? That video is definitely what they what they. That's the song they took down off of Sony, but they put it back up for some odd reason because they didn't want no smoke in the in the courtroom. Uh -oh. But in reality, in reality, um, having talent is 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 not is not enough. You gotta literally rub arms with the right people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, you gotta rub arms with the right people. You gotta have a little money behind you, mm -hmm. and you need and you need a lawyer. You're gonna need a lawyer regardless. A lawyer, because to, to to represent you your interests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you your own lawyer. Lawyer. You don't don't use the one yes. from the label because okay. the label Three is going to represent yeah. them. Mm -hmm. You want your own that's going to represent you. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and you got you got yourself covered too. Because I mean, this ain't no joke. You know, back in the day. Y'all guys know that none of them cats really made any money. You understand that. If right. you go back to old Motown and the things like that, they didn't make no money. They didn't make they any got money. Cars. They got what? They got cars and they, they exactly. got cars and houses. Maybe cars and houses. Yep. 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 So right now, I'm going to ask both of you guys, just to keep, keep you on the line, who's your favorite rapper? I, me personally, I'm going to say I like Rick Ross. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I love some Rick Ross. That little hook he got, huh? It's like <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. I'm made by music, uh -huh. huh? I don't know how long it took him to get there. I did a little research on him, but just that one little thing, man, he's blowing up on everybody's album, huh? Made by music, made by music. Do you find? <laughs> do you have something like that that people look at? Do you got your own little signature hook or whatever, so people can recognize you from all the other rappers? Oh yeah, I got a growl. I growl. <laughs> and, <laughs> 
not just growl, but I, I make it I make it sound sick though. You know what I'm saying? I make it to where you know, oh, that's cool. Okay, well let's hear some of it then. <laughs> you wanna hear some of it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want you to growl. Give us a hook. Give us something to roll with. Alright, alright. Um I make him snitch like Takashi. Do the six nine when she top me. Try to stop me. To my best, I salute. I'm about to get greedy about the lies and the truth. You do scoop. Damn, split your shit. Off a ring, nigga. Get the Mark 19 and move your spleen, nigga. I make mean, for ah. Oh, no. I'm, going I'm trying not to cut. So I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm in the, in the, in the bigger country. So I'm like. <laughs> He said, I'm trying not to. This is an explicit I'm podcast, so you can cuss. I was going to say, cuss is Go like right ahead. Okay. All right. Take it from the top. I should have asked, asked that before I went because I'm like, okay, I'm going straight from the dome. And going from the uh-huh. dome means you might just say some stuff that's going to be outlandish. Uh-oh. So I'm making uh-huh. pitch like Takashi. Do the 6 9 when she top me. Try to stop me. To my best, I salute. I'm about to get greedy about the lies and the truth. Get niggas scoot. Damn, split your wig, Afro Sheen, nigga. Get the Mark 19, remove your spleen, nigga. Your favorite rapper's line, suicidal. Give him clap, now the nigga viral. Judas to your Judas to your disciples. You know, something like that, you know. <laughs> and then you growl at him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like that, That was dog. good, Jason. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, you hear a couple of pop pop and all that. So, you know, that's <laughs> David, oh, yeah. let's 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 uh, who are some of your favorite? Wow, <laughs> <laughs> who are some of your favorite entertainers that you looked up that you're looking up to and, and trying to, you know, idolize your stuff behind? You know, you, go behind. You know, since I'm a real genuine R&B artist, you know, I like to go back, you know, to where it all started from, um, the roots of it. Um, some of my favorite artists are people like, you know, Kenny Babyface Edmonds, um, Babyface, uh, Usher, Bruno Mars, um, you know, Neo. Definitely, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a it's it's a mixture of all of them. He hasn't he, said Alexander yeah. O'Neill yet. He, he ain't in that generation, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Look, you you got to put me on. Thank you for putting me on. I know now. I know. Alexander I know. was I know. a little bit before his time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so do us a favor. You got your guitar. Don't yeah. Give us give us some live stuff like like yeah, like Scoop just did. Let me see what yeah. you got. Give, give you a little something. Okay. Give me a little, a little something. something. All right. All right. And you can go ahead and pull that mic <laughs> over as you're standing. It, it'll flex over to you, so get in front well, of your face. I'm going to tell you, like, people, this is Andre the Beast Crazy Show. We're live streaming with Scoop, with D, Carl, K, Carl in the Carl. game. Man, yes. this is a long day, and we got my co-host, Yolanda Smith. Please subscribe, rate, like, review. Share. Share. And be there. Just be there. There we go. Oh, we Concert. Oh, he might even <laughs> sing something. We can rate. Are we doing it up in here? Right. Damn, that's so good. You got a real guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is my single called Beautiful Girl. And it goes out to all the beautiful men in this room and, uh, Every one of y'all out there. Beautiful girl, I miss you. Come back to me, give me a chance. Not just a night, but a lifetime. Right to me, it's where you should be. Cause I Beautiful girl, you're so beautiful to me. 
All right now. Live. All right. The Andre the Beast Great <laughs> Show. Subscribe, rate, review, rate. Share. Man, that was really nice, awesome. Nice, nice, nice. Scoop, what do you think about that? <laughs> Man, look, I thought that was dope. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I was there live with you guys right now. I, I know. Say that. <laughs> I know that would be awesome. But I think what you see is, you know what? There is so much diversity to music, so much talent, you know, just among these two two men that you know i want you guys to go out and support them most foremost you know go out and support them you got scoot over here on what was it the militia to tell them what the company is what's your company um if you want to follow me and you want to go to my website and support it's uh www.scootsme.com which is www.sqootsme.com and you so, get the merchandise music everything you need Let's get it. Yep. He scoot with a Q. I like it. See, he uh, that's how you be different. I'm a branding expert. And so if you do what's normal and, and, and common, you can't stand out. But you right. take scoot and put a Q instead of a C, you get scoot, you know? <laughs> I still got this song in my mind. So how they going to find you, K. McCarl? How they finding you? <laughs> so you can find me everywhere um that you know um you have social media instagram facebook twitter linkedin um youtube as well um under damon carl that's d-a-m-o-n-k-a-r-l you can't forget about the k that's right? Right. that's right that's right you the see that party that's again. right da damon carl with a k with a k so that's before right. we wrap up guys i first want to say thank you for coming on that's what the show is about it's about everybody going into that keeping that beast frame of mind I like the way you guys have stayed strong you're young you're strong and you definitely got my attention when you get my attention that means something to me um <laughs> you see her what he said he said it means something to him <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, let's start with school i want both of you guys to leave something impactful that has that has changed your life, and what would you what would you recommend for people, young people, this generation, to move forward and to stay strong? Scoot, let's start with you, buddy. I would say just stay true with yourself. Do what you love doing, regardless. Nine to five is not for everybody, right. and, and yeah. I believe that. And I believe that um, God put us in this world. And gave us a purpose and it's our choice actually it's it's up to us to figure out what it is and to live out live out our purpose in life even if it's if, even if it's hosting a radio show or being an artist or or whatever but god god gave us gift for a reason that's what we're here for so don't get stuck listening to everybody else that's out there because you know you're true so do what you love doing love that's it. all i gotta say love it damn so <clears throat> What I would rather, what I would love to say to the young people and you know other aspiring artists is that um, you know make sure you make sure make sure you are are a person of quality, more so. Um, don't just don't don't half you know don't have do your work. You know, give quality to it um, because you know when it all comes down to it, you're you're the right person and you're the only person that you know they're gonna come to afterwards uh, when it's all said and done. So. Um, you know, just just keep on doing the real, authentic version of yourself. Keep on living the real, authentic version of yourself. All right. Now, you know, that's what I tell them in a minute. You need to be able to articulate your value. Live he sound, authentically. He, he sound and like he read your book. Out. Did you read my book? <laughs> Y'all need to go get my book, by the way. Reputation to reward. That's Matt. right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Hey guys, thanks for coming on. Hey, you know what? We're gonna keep following you guys. We're gonna have you guys back on. We want to know your careers and how where it's going. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been live for 12 o'clock to 7. We're almost out of here. This is Yolanda Damon Scoop. This is Andre the Beast Creighton. Show, 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 show. And Jason. <laughs> and Jason. Don't go nowhere, guys.